Proverbs chapter 10. And we're going to have a lot of scripture on this one. So we, we're gonna not going to see the fullness of it today. So you know it's going to be a part two to it. And I'm going to encourage you to take notes. I'm going to encourage you to take notes. Something might come back and be a blessing for you tomorrow. Something might come back and be a blessing for you tomorrow. If you have it, please stand to your feet. I'm going to read one verse, but I'm, I have a lot of verses that I will go over, but I won't do them all today. Amen. I just want to read one, and I'm going to highlight uh, verse 6 in, in Proverbs chapter 10. It says, Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Let's look at that again. Take, let's look at it one more time. It says, Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Can I ask a question? Do we have any righteous in here? So if, I, if we have righteous in here, this scripture just talked to you. And can I ask you, what did it say to you? It says that you're blessed. But in, in the serious note, if you don't understand that you are blessed, it won't chase you down. You're just going to think something happened to you by happenstance. And you're not going to be able to understand what God is doing in your life. You're not going to understand that that is God that, that's really activating blessings in your life. And he, wants to, and, he wants to, and he wants to move higher in you or he wants you to move higher. But until you understand what it is that God is doing, he's not going to let you know. Because he's just going to be there. He's going to be there. And you're going to think, it's the red button back there. Not, not that one. Yeah. Okay. And you're just going to like, what happened to me? What's taking place in my life? You're not going to understand and, and watch all of the blessings that you're going to miss out on. Hmm. Let's finish this verse. So then it says, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. That's another interesting scripture to me, how to finish it. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The evil person, the person that's not doing well, that tr mistreats God's champions. <laughs> Y'all remember that, right? God's champions. Do we have any God's champions in this house? But see, this, this is what he's talking about right here. When you understand the blessings over your life, you're going to be able to walk in the anointing that he's placed over your life. You're going to be able to champion for him for those that don't have a mouth for themselves. Let's look at the, 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 the title that he gave me. Leaders must have a skillful tongue. Hmm. Leaders must have a skillful tongue. This can fit in your everyday life. How you treat people in your everyday life. How you talk to people. How you interact with people. Is it skillful or you just fly off the handle? And I'm going to tell you, that used to be me. I never thought what I was going to say. I used to just say it. I didn't care about the consequences. I didn't care about people's feelings. And this is how it was. But guess what? I had to understand the blessings that came upon my life. And I changed the way that I talked to people. And I had to really think about how I felt if that was me. When I was talking to people. 
And I want you to really think about when you're talking to people, think about them talking to you. Or better yet, look in the mirror when you talk to people and that's who you're talking to. You get it? See, we just can't say any old thing. Because we're responsible for what we say. You're responsible for everything that you say. And watch this. If you, by the words or the actions that come from you, send, have, be the one responsible to send somebody to hell. Oh my. Oh my. If you're responsible for sending, running somebody out of here because of what something you said. That's why it, it, it takes me a moment before I say something to somebody, especially in this setting now. Because everything I say that I, I'm responsible for, it. I'm held to a higher standard or a higher calling because of the title or the position that I'm in. I'm not better, but I'm held to a higher standard. But guess what? The same standard that I'm held to is the same standard that you are. So you're not exempt. Why, what are you saying, Pastor? You just said that you held to a higher standard. Yes, because of the title. But guess what? The words that come out of my mouth that comes from heaven to your ill way is what you're responsible for. So I'm telling you now that you're held to the same standard that I am because of the words that you hear. And this is why we have a mess in church right now because pastors don't want to speak the right words. This is what they want to do for you. Tickle your ears. That's what they want to do. This is what the Bible says. Oh, okay, I'll do it better then. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> but that's what they do. They want to tickle your ear. They don't want to lose you because of the money that you have in your pocket. See, I said a word last week. I think it was Thursday or Friday. It's time out for being politically correct. We have to be God correct. I may say some things that hurt your feelings, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm coming to you in love. So what's the old saying, Pastor Wendy? If I'm hurting your feelings and I'm coming to you in love and it's coming from heaven and it's coming from Scripture, check who you serve. Because a lot of times the spirit that's in, in me doesn't agree with the demon that's inside of that person. So a lot of times when we say things, what's that? <laughs> so a lot of times when we say things, that demon can't take it. And that's who gets mad. That's who gets upset. I was reading a story and I didn't get to finish reading the whole thing. But the story said that, that this lady, she, she, it, wasn't, it wasn't the devil and it wasn't God. It was her that, this, that made her become a lesbian. She said it wasn't the devil and it wasn't God. It was her that decided to become a lesbian. But this is the point that I want, this is the stickler that I want you to hear. She said it was God that changed me and saved me. I know, I, I see the looks. But you got to understand, everything's a choice. God doesn't force anything on you. And the devil can't make you make a decision. He just gives you temptation. So it all decide, the decision is yours, is mine, what we decide to do. So the way we talk to those individuals is what wins them. And what changes them. Now, let me tell you, I, I, let me finish the story a little bit. 
She said she was molested as a kid. She was raped coming up. So those are some of the decisions that weighed on her. I was molested by a man. I was raped by a man. So what I get is these men are not treating me right. So let me try. Because the, the, every time I talk to a lady, she understands me. She understands what I'm going through. And watch this. She touches the right area in my most inner being. So what is it? She knows what I feel. This is what she was going through her mind. So remember what I said as leaders, we have to speak with the right tongue. So how do you talk to a person like that? The first thing that we want to do is hell and damnation. Yo, you're going to hell. You're going straight to hell because of your lifestyle. Yes, the lifestyle is wrong. But until you learn a person, until you be able to sit down and talk to the person, you got to be careful how you talk to them. Remember what I told you, Jesus and the Samaritan woman? Jesus sat down and asked her, can I have a drink of your cup? And he talked with her. And he sat down and ate with her. So they interacted with each other before he said what he needed to say to her. He got to know her. He got to understand what she was going through before he said this. Now let's talk about your husbands is what he said to her. And she told him, Jesus, I don't have any husbands. He said, I know, and that's the problem. All those men that you're sleeping with are not your husbands. But see, if he never sat out and, and talked with her, interacted with her, he wouldn't have understood how to talk to her. And she wouldn't have received him. So saints, what I'm saying to you is, if they come in with issues, don't run the opposite way. We got to help them. This is... This is how come we lose people out of churches. Can I use you as an example? When he first came into the church, he said, I don't interact with people. I went to anoint his head. Hey, what you doing? I thought he was about ready to get up fight. And see, I can say that with him now. But I, I didn't understand him, but I said, it's okay. But watch this. If, if, if that would have happened in another setting, I said, man, are you crazy? This is anointing oil. You need to take this. What would that have did to him? We thought he had a wall then. But now you see that brother, he want to shake your hand. He gives hugs. And he smiles. <laughs> That's because of the anointing of God and what takes place when you have a willing heart to open your heart. And watch this. Go across the aisle and talk to people. Leaders must have a skillful tongue. And I'm not just talking about leaders. You are an influencer of people. So you all are leaders. That's why your tongue has to be skillful. And this is what's going to allow us to move into supernatural success. I've learned how to deal with people better and better this year because of the wisdom and the knowledge that God has placed into me. Because of what he said. I never understood why he said Proverbs the whole year. But I'm starting to understand. And, and the one faith fellowship that, that, that we're part of and that, that God placed on my heart. 
We have other pastors in there. And they said, Pastor, we need to let people see the three that, 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 that really initiated this thing. We don't need other people's voices. I said, that's not me. That's not me. I want to incorporate everybody. This is not an organization. This is a fellowship. And in the fellowship, you got to bring people all over to come in and be a part of this thing. <laughs> so one of the things I said, I can do this on my own. But I reached out because I want to incorporate. But I can't, I cannot be a part of an organization that's not winning souls. And that's this ministry. I can't be a part of a ministry that doesn't want to win souls. I'm a jokester. I like having fun. I can't be a part of a dry church. If you don't like having fun, I told them you with the wrong person. I pick with my wife. James, I pick with him now. Because he didn't sit in Bible study, he understand. And Sister Nadette said he likes it. <laughs> but he put a qualifier on. He said, Don't speak for the voiceless. <laughs> he said, Let me speak for myself. But that's how I am. Because what? Watch. And when I pick with you, I'm picking with you in love. And then I see what God does when I when I call you out because it's interaction. And and I don't do things, once again, to hurt you. I do things to lift you up. Lift you up. Come on now. Watch this. So as leaders, we have to have a skillful tongue. And in Proverbs, we find that, that this, this is speaking about tongue throughout Proverbs. So it's something about that thing that's in your mouth. If you squeeze it, it'll hurt you. So that it's it doesn't have a bone, but it's powerful. My fist and my knuckles have bones, and I can hit you, and, and you'll feel it. But I don't have a bone in my tongue, but it's more powerful than my fist. Your tongue is more powerful. There's life and death in that tongue. How you speak to people is how, how, you, how you bring them up. How do, you, how do you tear them down is how you interact. What does your tongue allow you to say? Have you ever just sat back? Go to the mall and just sit there. I know the mall is a dying thing now. It's, like a, it's on the endangered list. It's, just, it's on the endangered list right now. But what I want you to do, it just go somewhere and sit and listen to people talk. Listen how people talk to their kids. Look at how people talk to each other. See what they're saying to each other. Take notes of it. Are they encouraging each other? Or they're tearing each other down when they I remember as a police officer, I, would, I went on a call, and some of you might have heard me say this before. And it was at a, at a church of all places. At a church of all places. An alarm went off. They was having a picnic or they was having a, something, a youth day at the church. And we get there, and there's tons of people still there. And we, they ask, oh, why are you here? They said, we are here because the alarm went on. They said, oh, man, I'm sorry, we messed up. And the little boy did something, and they said, no sense, stop that. The lady was calling the kid, no sense. I said, what? And I look, and she see me look at her. She said, oh, that's his nickname. And I look like that again. I said, that's even worse. So this is what's been spoken over this kid. He was like... He was like five or six years old. So I don't know when they start calling him no sense. But five or six years of age, and this is what's been spoken to you into his earway every day. So I said, can I say something? This is me, y'all. Can I say something? 
Mm. I said, you might not want to speak that over his life. Can we call him millionaire? Something like, and they said, it's just a nickname. I said, life and death. Y'all in the church. Even in our joking manner, what do we speak over people's lives? What do we say about each other? This is why one of the main reasons I ask you to go out and greet each other and speak life. Because it's going to get at a point in, in, in our walk in this church where we're going to get people that is not as blessed as we are. And I'm really going to need you to speak it into their lives. That's why we practice it now with each other. Because watch, you guys are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. You're the head and not the tail. You're on top and not beneath. This is what we have to continue to speak. And this is why we practice this. And this is why I want you to be able to be used to it. So when that person comes in, watch this. That does not smell as good as you do. It's not going to discourage you. You're going to walk over it because it's already in your heart. It's already a part of your life because you practiced it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Now it is, it's part of you. It's part of you. I'm in a teaching mode. I, I, I'm not here to jump and make you shout. I want you, I got to give you something that you're going to be able to hold on to. Hold on to it. A positive, as a positive influence, leaders who use words skillfully increase their influence. Watch this. Pastor Wendy on the One Faith Fellowship line, she gets out and she speaks positive. And this one lady that's there, she always says, is Pastor Wendy on the line? I just love her spirit. I just love, I can learn a lot. And guess what we learned last night? She said, I can, I learn a lot from Pastor Wendy. This lady is 80 years old. And she said, she loves the way she speaks. And she's 80 years old. She said, I can learn a lot from her. A positive word can influence others' lives. Y'all might want to write that down. You might hear that again. <laughs> Skillfully increase their influence. Leaders who understand their power of their words accomplish the following. If you understand the powers of your word, watch what you accomplish. Mm. Let's look at this. And it's all backed up by scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, they proclaim justice and are blessed. They proclaim justice and they are blessed. Proclaim justice. So you proclaim justice and you're blessed. This got to go. This is. I'm going to have to stay put a little bit, but I couldn't take that humming, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Proverbs, Proverbs 10 and 6 says, Blessed are the one. Are on the head of the righteous. So bless, blessings are on the head. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. So if you treat people right and you follow the directive of God, He said, I'm gonna send blessings to you and your household. Isn't that something? And we wonder why we struggle as a people. Why we struggle. If we just line our lives up with the word of God. God said, if you line up with me, I'm going to put blessings on your head. It's simple. But we fight with ourselves. We fight with ourselves all the time. To do what God asks. Number two, they speak hope for the future. 
becoming a fountain of life to others. And we find this in uh, Proverbs 10, 11. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. A well of life. Let's go back to the Jacob's well in Scripture. And when we're talking about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And I told you two things. The, the well was in the center of Samaria. It was in the center. So then you had, you had the Samaritans and you had the Jews. But you had a group of people that didn't like each other. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans and the Samaritans didn't like the Jews. But they, they all came to the well. That was in the center of town. So when Jesus came and he asked this lady for a drink of her water out of her cup, she said, you want a drink from my cup? You don't like me and I don't like you. But you want a drink of my cup? Think about this. So Jesus said, I have to find a common ground. The words that was coming out of Jesus' mouth was wise, and, and, and he was thinking them out before he spoke. So he was saying, I have to find a common ground so I can get the Samaritans and the Jews together. Can I ask you a question? Don't this sound like something we go through today? People from my group don't like people from your group. And we can't get them to come together. We can't get them on a common ground. And they don't like each other because, watch this, the color of their skin. They can't deal with each other because my skin is brown and your skin is white. Where's the common ground? Put your hand there. Can I, can I tell you something or ask the question here? Who did in here, who God did not create? God created all of us that sit in here? That's the common ground. Because watch what scripture says. He says that you all are wonderfully and beautifully made in my image. We all are made wonderfully and beautifully in God's image. But I don't like you and you don't like me because of the color of my skin. But we all made wonderfully and beautifully in God's image. How can we get common ground? How, how do we get to the common ground? The words that we speak. The actions that we have from our heart. How do we be able to come in and, and sit down and break bread with each other and we don't like each other? So Jesus said, let me get them somewhere where they like each other. And they said they don't like Jacob, but but they, but I mean, they like Jacob, but they don't like each other. So let me get to this well because the Jews like Jacob because because watch this. Jacob was the father. Along with Isaac, Jacob. And, and all the rest of those uh, uh, apostles, he was along with them. And, and they all liked him. And the Jews said, I like Jacob too. Because Jacob was in the first five books of the Bible. And they believed in the first five books of the Bible. So they, this is the common ground. Jesus said, I got to get them there to the well. So when Jesus got them to the well, he said, now we are on a common ground. And we can get people to understand who they are. So watch this number three. They said they speak forth wisdom and save others from ruin. So Jesus said, I need to speak forth some root, uh, wisdom. And watch this. He said, when I speak forth this wisdom, I'm going to save my people from ruin. And, and I got to take a step back. How can I deal with this? How do I get it? How can my mind stay open? Jesus, God, God visited me one night. 
ladies and gentlemen. He visited me one night when, when, when all this racism and all this and, and, and all the ignorance of people not liking people was coming to a head. He, he had a, a sit down talk with me and he said, have you ever considered Satan coming to me and asking me to put color into the world? I said, OK, Lord. I said, but what's the difference? What's the big deal about it? He said, I allowed him to do that because he said, I trusted my people. What, 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 is he, what does he trust you? He said, I trust you to be able to overcome the ignorance of hatred. And guess what he said? He said, but this is what people don't know. Any, <clears throat> any amount of animosity into, in a person's heart will denounce them or stop them from making it to the kingdom of heaven. So what's the wisdom? What's, what, are, what are we to speak? What are we to speak? Do you, have you ever went into a church and, and, and the pastor is up there saying, my people? But he's talking about my people in the form of color. If I'm not, what did we just say? God says that all people were made wonderfully in my image. So all people should be your people. I don't care what color you are. I don't care. You shouldn't care what color you are. What you should care about is what your spirit is. What is your spirit says? Now, don't get me wrong. I understand slavery. I understand retribution. I understand all of it. We understood that it took place. But how do we overcome all that? We overcome it by the goodness of God that's inside of our heart. We come, we come to it when we have a common ground. And the common ground is God and God alone. When we can understand it, stop taking scripture out of context. And stop trying to use scripture as a tool to hover over somebody and keep them beneath where, who they are. This is what leaders are supposed to do. Let's go back to number three. Speak forth wisdom and save others from ruin. Let's look at Proverbs 10 and uh, 13 and 14. It says, wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. Do you have understanding? So wisdom is found on your lips. It says, wisdom is found on the lips of him who have understanding. But a rod is for the back of him who is devout of understanding. So this person is devout understanding. Lord says, don't worry about it. You don't have to take care of the problem. I'll deal with it. God will deal with it. Stop trying to fight a fight that's not even your fight. God says, I will put the rod on their back. God will deal with it. Verse 14. It says, wise people store of knowledge. Oh, <laughs> I like that part right there. Let's, let's, let's make it a little sound a little better. As you store up your money in your savings account, this is what you should do with wisdom. You store up wisdom. Why do I store up wisdom, Pastor? Because when you're out there, when you're in the street and you don't have your Bible, you have wisdom. To draw forth. You have, you, have, you have a wise mindset. To be able to draw forth. And watch. To alleviate. The problem at hand. Mm. Yeah we need more. We need more folks in this. Here today. Especially those that have a problem. With wisdom. They have a problem because. With how you look. How you look. How you look. How you look. We need them here. This is the whole problem in itself because the, the church is not dealing with it. I told you earlier, church want to be politically correct. I can't do that. 
I got to be God correct. I'm not going to hell to, for politics. I'm going to heaven for God. For 14. But the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Have you just sat down and, and, and just talked to somebody that you know is foolish? And, and, and they're trying to talk to you as if they were wise. And you just know everything that's coming out of their mouth is a lie. That's a foolish person. And guess what? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem, no problem. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, and he texted me earlier, and he said, Pastor, I won't be here today. But you see how God operates. I texted him back. I said, I pray that God strengthens you. <laughs> It strengthens you. Wisdom. Wisdom. And this is why, and I'm taking a sidebar, this is why I love this church. If we weren't a part of this church, we couldn't do what would just happen. Yeah, to God be the glory. When have you ever been part of a church where the pastor let them stop and just talk on a Sunday morning? But this is how God operates here. This is how God operates here. Because I want to see the best. And th that right there is part of being the best. Because you know that brother wouldn't open his mouth. He'd try to touch him. <laughs> he was ready to fight. But God. But God. So Tap yourself on, on the shoulders. You guys didn't give up. You didn't give up. You continued to pour love into him. And the more he said no, the more you said yes. But God. Amen. Number four. This, and we're talking about accomplish. This is we're talking about how, how the power of the words accomplish the following. Number four. They know when silence is more powerful than words. Back to my police officer days. When I get, get a call and, and they call me out and they, and they will say, I get there, I say, can I help you? And they go on and I'll Gary, Gary tell them what takes place. And they start talking. And I tell them, I said, I didn't call myself out here. You called for help. So if you want, if you want help, you got to do a little less talking and a lot more of listening. 
Sometimes we talk our way out of helping people. Because when people, let, let just be simple with you. When people want help, you know how I help them? I have them answer their own question. I'll ask one question and I'll let them talk. And when they get to a sticking point, I'll say something to interject. But I keep them talking. Because watch, it's already in you. Sometimes you just don't know how to get to. So the less talking I do, the more you get to get into it. You see how that worked? I've done marriage counseling that way, where they had issues. And, and after they finished, they said, thank you for the help. I said, I ain't do nothing. You said it. And I'm telling you this, watch the wisdom in this also. Because what happens is, a lot of people, if it doesn't work, want to blame you. So if you get them to answer their own question and it doesn't work, who they to blame? Themselves. You understand? So let's look at this again. They know when silence is more powerful than words. So we look at uh, Proverbs 10 and 19. It says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. So watch this. What happens is the more we talk, the more we say stuff without wisdom, the more sin is available there. The more sin is able to, to connect to the words that you say. That's why it's important to say the things that God have you to say and the things that he have you to say only. Stop trying to say your own thing, especially when you're trying to help deliver somebody. Your words are going to find a way to send somebody straight to hell. But if you use the wisdom and admiration of God, you're going to be able to help send somebody to heaven because of the words that God placed in you. Let's look at the scripture again. It says in Proverbs 10 and 19, it says, in the multitudes of words, sin is not lacking. So what? The more, <laughs> what it's telling you is, the more you run your mouth, the more sin is going to be able to come out of that mouth. If you don't have the wisdom of God. So watch, it says, but he who restrains his lips is wise. I had to learn that one, folks. <laughs> I really had to learn how to restrain my mouth. Because I said, I'll blurt out anything. But to God be the glory, he's, he's changed me. And, and look, I, I, I talk to a lot of people now, and I got to listen. And one individual told me, he said, you, you just observing what's taking place. Yeah, I'm being wise. I want to know what's taking place before I open my mouth and run it. Wisdom. Number five. Their words feed and nourish many others. What you good at, Sister Nadette? What's that? Eyes? Art. So I'm not an artist. So the words that you speak to me in art, according to scripture, is what? What did I just, come on, somebody, what, what did that verse just say? Feed others. You can feed me by being an entrepreneur. Maintenance. Who? Hugger. Oh, I'm glad I asked you again because it sounded like you didn't. It sounded like something else came up. The the what you call what do you call your business? Salesman. How to talk to people in sales. 
See, God places people strategically in different places to be able to feed others. Helping folks when they can't help themselves, when they've been attacked by others. See what God does? We can put every one of your into, it. just give me a, 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 a sentence from each one of you and watch how we can put that together to be able to save souls. I don't care what you do. As long as you're doing it for the goodness of God, everything that you are, just one sentence, we can put that together and save souls. What does the scripture say again? Come on. You don't believe me? Y'all want to try it? Save souls from one sentence from each and every person in here. Their words feed and nourish many others. And it says in verse 21, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Your words, your lips of the righteous feeds many. When you don't know how to do and you, they come to you, if they, if they, if they want an art business and they want to know how to do art, but they can't do it and they want to make a living, they come to you, you'll feed them that way to save their soul. So when you say that you don't understand what's your calling or what's your point in ministry, God says, what is it that you like? What you like is going to be able to help somebody else. What, look at scripture again. Verse 21 in Proverbs 10. It says the lips of the righteous feed many. It goes back to being that champion for God. When you're that champion, you're going to be able to help feed others by wisdom. It's not that you got to kick out money. It's wisdom. But the fools die for lack of wisdom. Once again, let's go back to the foolish person. He's going to try to tell you how to live his life, but he's, he's, he doesn't even have a home. And I, now, don't get me wrong. You have some homeless people by choice from circumstances. So I'm not saying that you can't learn from somebody that's not home that's not home that's homeless. But wisdom. Let's understand the wisdom part. This person lost what he had because of a poor decision, poor choices, and he never wanted to change. You understand? That's like somebody that watch, the Lord is saying that I'm trying to bless you but you don't want to pay your taxes. God said, I can't bless you if you don't, if you don't follow what I'm giving you. He says, you, you, you're in Caesar's view. So you do unto Caesar as do, render to Caesar what's due to Caesar. Because we, we're in this world, but we're not of the world. But since we're here, we got to follow the law of the land. So it says, pay your taxes, give your taxes. And if we don't do it and, and we struggle, that's our fault because we're not doing what God has ordained us to do. Do we understand this? Number six, the expression what is right. Wait, they express what is right. Nature, the right in the hearts of, of those who follow. Wait a minute, I can't even read my own right. They express what is right. Neutral. The right in the hearts of those who follow. <laughs> I can't read my right. I'm sorry. They express what is right. Uh, nurture the right in the hearts of others who follow. Okay, man. So they nurture the hearts of others. I'm sorry. <laughs> so watch. When you know what's right and you're doing what's right, you can nurture Part of somebody else to follow you. That's a good leader. 
Pastor, I need some scripture to go with that one. Okay, I'm glad you asked me. Let's look at verses 31 and 32. The mouth of the righteous bring forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. So the mouth of the righteous will bring wisdom. Your mouth is righteous. It's going to bring wisdom. It's going to be able to help them, to nurture them. But when we talk about that tongue again, watch this tongue. It says the mouth of the, right, of the righteous bring forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. So watch this. <laughs> I got to look and make sure I don't say something wrong here. The perverse tongue. When you're trying to help somebody and you give them the right ideals and you give them the right information, but they don't want to follow what you give them. And they talk about against everything that you instructed them. They can't keep this. They can't keep money in the bank. And nothing goes right because the perverse tongue is cut off. God is not going to continue to allow you to flourish when you can't do right and you don't want to follow godly instruction. God has to show you that he's still in control. He said, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to have you struggle until you decide to be righteous. Hmm. Okay. The lips of the right, verse 32, the lips of the righteous know what is, is acceptable. Let's stop right there for a second. The lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable. You're not making excuses. You're not trying to cover up a lie to be right. Because you know what's acceptable. You know what's right from wrong. And then the scripture goes forth. And it says, but. Ah, we know what but means, ladies and gentlemen. Something is about to change. But the mouth of the wicked. What is perverse? So, but with the mouth of the wicked, it perverse things. It's going to corrupt things. And they wonder why they struggle. They wonder why things are not right. Because they got perverseness coming out of their mouth. I know it's rough, but it's fair. It's the only way we're going to be successful. If we, teach, if we get teachings like this, if we get instructions like this, I don't want to see none of us fail. Hmm. All right, verse number seven. And I, okay. Verse number seven. The memory of the righteous is blessed. The memory of, say that with me. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Say it again. The memory of the righteous is blessed. One more time. I'm forgetting everything. I can't remember nothing. What this scripture just did. Y'all keep feet. When you say that I can't remember nothing, you say my memory is blessed. My memory is blessed. My memory is blessed. My memory is blessed. You got that? Okay, let's look at but. The man of wicked will rot. <sighs> Have you ever wondered when you look at some of your friends and you guys are the same age, but they look 50 years older than you? You ever seriously wondered what took place? Have you ever found out what happened? Read that verse 7 part uh, B again for me, somebody. Just read it out loud. Sin gets on you and it distorts you. It changes the way that you look. It changes your appearance. It ages you. Because remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to kill your looks. He comes to destroy your youth. Ste was that? 
steal your health. That's what he does. And this is what Pastor Wendy was saying uh, last Monday in, or Sunday, and some of y'all laughed because y'all didn't get it at first. She said, if you're going to go to hell, go first class. And if you're going to heaven, go first class. You can't straddle the fence. Can't straddle the fence. So if you're going to do it, do your best. Either way, do your best. Think about that. That, way, that might get you later. <laughs> but <laughs> do your best. <laughs> the memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. Psalms uh, 112 and 6 says, Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. If you're evil and you die, people will celebrate because they're happy that you're gone. But if you're righteous, they're going to still celebrate you. So which one you want to be celebrated as? They want, they're celebrating you because you're gone. And they don't want you no more when you're evil. But when you're righteous, they celebrate the good that you left and they're going to remember you because of the good that you did. Yes, I understand.